um, fine tune it a yeah, little bit. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, because without constructive criticism, I mean, you can't get better. We're live, Cuzzo. And we are back. Welcome back to the Electors Podcast. This is episode 39. Well, and, 38, uh, technically. Because 30, oh, remember, right, we, we right, had man. a throwaway. You know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna scratch that. We're going to do it over again. Do forget, it over again. Forget the number, man. Forget the All right. <laughs> All right. And we're live, Cuzzo. Hit him with that intro. Welcome back to the Electors Podcast. This is episode 38. We want to thank you guys for watching and listening as always. And we are back in one of our... Uh, uh, studios that we first started out in, so we're super excited about that, and yeah. just gonna get back into the flow and the rhythm yeah. of uh, of the Electors podcast. And so. it feels good in here. You it know, does. Like, it does. It you does. Know, we ain't been here in a minute, but it feels good. I know, man. Yeah. I know. I know. The yeah. aesthetics, man, is what we. Uh, I really. I mean, the the wallpaper and all that stuff, man, is what what really pops. Yeah. But yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, it just feels like a good good energy in this room. Like yeah. since we were in here. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, we might have to go back to my basement one of these episodes. I think we should, man. You know, just to take it back should. a little bit. I think bit. we should, just to yeah. get a little nostalgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but yeah, man, for today, we got uh, we got a little reflection on Ruben's episode. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that was, uh, I would say, I mean, it was, a, it was a big episode, I think, in a sense of the status that Ruben is climbing to. Right. You know, we had Rio. Rio was a, Rio was a big... Big guest we had, right? You know, TV right. superstar, right? Shout out Rio, right? Shout out to Rio, yeah. Yes, but sir. but you know, and then Ruben being a comedian, you know, we both talked about like, hey man, you think it's gonna be all jokes, mm -hmm. or like, you know, are we gonna be able to, you know, get that other side of Ruben? Yeah, not knowing, not really knowing how he was gonna approach uh, the episode, but man, he gave us he gave us more than enough, you oh, know. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, his story, man, of how he's how he almost went homeless. Yeah. You know, to pursue his dream of acting, right. which eventually turned into comedy. Um, right. I think that that, uh, that was something, man, that was a big takeaway for me. Yeah. You know, we talk about all the time on the podcast, being persistent, staying resilient, you know, to hear time and time again, guests come on and, and relay that message over and over again in their own way, with yeah. their own life experience. Right. It's a good thing to see. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So. And I, I really like the stories, man. The stories for me put everything together. Yep. You know, like his story, um, you know, was like, I was like, dang, man, like that's, that's wow. That's, you know, that's a lot harder than what I'm going through or right. what I've been through, I think. So, right. um, you know, to see him be able to get through that and then climb up the ladder. I mean, that's dope, man. It is dope. It is dope. And then also too, man, he's a, uh, he, he's not selfish in the, from the, from the standpoint that he's, he's only trying to get him to the top. Right. He's taking his friends and his buddies with him, right. you know, and that's something that we wanted to bring up in the in the podcast a little bit later on. But it's like yeah. helping others. Yeah. Helping others sometimes is helping yourself. Right. You know, if you're able to to push other people to, to other plateaus, you know, you don't know who you're going to help along the way. Right. While, while you're going up, that may right. end up needing that you may end up needing later on down the road, you know. And so I think this is a lot about him as a person. I yep. think this is a lot about his character. Yeah. And uh, you like to you like to see people like that succeed. You know, yeah, you want definitely. to see them win, so you root for them. Yeah, definitely. You know? I know. I, me and the fiance, we went to uh, three of his shows. Hey, <laughs> since uh, or two two of his shows since then. Yeah. Not only just to support, but also right. just to see the comedy scene, see yeah. some new comedians, you know, yeah. and, and get some good laughs in. So. Right. And the reason why I'm laughing is because we were <laughs> we were talking about yeah. that. Hey, Ruben, if you're listening, man, I'm serious, bro. Like I really want to be there. He I does. Really, I really does, do, Ruben. bro. Like I really want to be there. He does. But yeah, it's like it's like I was saying. Like sometimes. Um, depending on the time of your life, sometimes yeah. you know, great people come in your life, yeah. And you know, like I've been wanting to give that back to him, and it's like, man, you know, I can't, I really can't right now, right? But trust me, man, like he he is definitely on my list of people where it's like, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna be there for sure. I'm gonna support you, bro. Like just you know, give me like another month or two or something. Right, right, you know, right, I, right. I always think of um, Rakia, man, like where she talks about like, hey, like this quarter I couldn't do it, yeah. But man, trust me. Yeah. Trust me, man. You are in the books. Yeah. He understands, man. He yeah, understands. So he's just got to give you a little, a little oh, crap along the I way. I can't wait for that know? show, man, because I know uh, he's gonna come at and me. And you gotta sit VIP front row. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm VIP. I might he's be gonna, backstage. He's gonna, yeah. He's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna look right at you, and he's gonna be like, yeah, I got something for you. Yeah. I and got it, it was funny. You. I saw his post. He was like, when somebody was like, uh, how do I get front row? And he's uh -huh. like. 
you gotta get there early. <laughs> so, so I know not to ask that question. Yeah, no, uh, uh-uh, uh, uh-uh. just show up, early. show up thirty minutes early. He's like, man. especially you gotta get there early. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, but um, but yeah, man. So you talk about you know focus on on helping others and how Ruben has done that and mm-hmm. in your experience mm-hmm. so far. How have you felt that you you've kind of gone down that path to like help somebody else? Where I, I'm sure you got. Plenty of stories from being a barber. So, like, what's one that pops up to you where you were like, you did this, and then maybe, man, maybe years later or whatever, you you were like, man, was this a return? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give I'm gonna give a shout out to. He actually works directly to the to the left of me now, but his name is is Javi, and his handle on IG is OG Javi Reyes, right? So I'm gonna give a shout out to you, brother. And the reason why I'm saying that is because he started off as one of my. um, I guess you could say like uh, students who wanted to learn barbering. Okay. He would come in. This was seven, eight years ago, man. He would come into the shop and mention to me that, hey, he wanted to become a barber, right? And at the time, I was a young barber starting out. I didn't have a lot of experience, but I was like, hey, any questions that you have, if you ever want to come in and shadow me, you're more than welcome to do so. And as the years went on, he would. And eventually he got to the point where he said, okay, hey, I'm signing up for barber school. And then he did. Right. Completed his school, got his license. And now he's I mean, he's been out of barber school, I believe, for two years. And just to see his growth, just to see him continuing to push, to push his brand, to push merch, to push. He's even started to create his own product line. I mean, I'm really, really proud of how far he's come. And it all started with me just saying to him, hey, man, this is how you do this. Uh, right. These are the these are the tools that I use. I would recommend these tools to you, and you should try these out. And I didn't I didn't have to, you know I didn't have to I didn't have to give them little key right. secrets or anything like that. But I didn't right. feel like I've always felt like man, there's there's plenty of hairs, there's plenty of heads to cut. Yeah, in yeah, the city, there is. <laughs> there's over two hundred thousand people. Yeah. There's no way we could all, I could cut them all by myself, or the shop can cut them all by themselves. So why not help the young man who I see myself in? And I think that's one of the reasons why. You know, I choose to continue to help out young barbers is that I remember being that young barber and not knowing how to do things, not knowing how to line, not knowing how to get the blend to look a certain way, um, not paying attention to hair texture. Those little things that end up meaning, you know, going a long way later on down the road. Right. So, right. yeah, man. But that that was the first uh, thing that came to my mind when it yeah, came yeah. to helping others. What yeah. about yourself, man? Man, I think uh, when it comes to me helping, there's a uh, there's this one younger kid that I that I met. I wouldn't say a kid because he's, but he's in his twenties. I don't know why I say kid. Maybe it's because I'm thirty three yeah, and people, old, man. That's what people he is, just call man. me a kid, man. And he, <laughs> yeah, he's just younger than me. And um, it's not so much of what I've done uh, right away, but it's it's always been uh, I'm I'm a phone call away or I'm a text. Like if he texts me, I answer. Yeah. If he if he was to call me, I and if I didn't answer, I'd call him back. Uh huh. And it's usually just questions on either life or, you know, applying to certain jobs, whatever the case may be, giving him advice. Mm-hmm. Um, he follows our podcast, too. Dope. So, um, you know, I, that that's the first one that comes to mind where, you know, I've been kind of there for him because, like, I remember, you know, me kind of being in my 20s mm-hmm. and, um, you know, shout out my boy Richie. Mm-hmm. But Richie was a – he was older than me, and I remember I was going through something. I was, like, 23. Mm-hmm. And he was, like, the – like the second person I called aside from, you know, my dad. Cause he yeah. was, you know, I was looking for somebody older. Cause like right. my, my best friend, Aaron, we're the same age. Right. And I'm sure he was going to give me some He's crazy. Going, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know, shout out Aaron, but, but like Richie was, he, he was able to give me like, say it in a way where it wasn't, you know, where I could understand it. And then it made right. sense. Right. So, and then I was able to make a decision from there. And so far since that, since that thing, you know, decisions worked out. So, um, you know, I always felt like I wanted to be, that that Richie, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Richie to somebody, for even sure. if it's like a stranger, bro. For like sure. I don't, I don't really care. Like I, I, whatever I know, I'll tell you for sure. You know, so and that's a blessing to have people like that in your yeah. life. You know, and I, and I think that would be a, a a good tidbit to take away from this episode is that find uh, older people, men or women, yeah, that have a pretty good head on their shoulders, right, and that you know give you good, solid, sound advice, advice, yeah, in a way. It doesn't seem like it's judgmental. It doesn't seem right. like it's, uh, you know, where they're pushing it on to you. Right. You know, because it's a skill to be able to uh, to give someone advice, you yeah. know. And, um, 
Yeah, man. I just you made me think about some of the some of my mentors, you know, yeah. and how grateful and thankful I am to have them in my life. Yeah. And to your point, you know, hopefully we can continue to do that for some of the right. younger men in our lives. Right. So. Yeah. And and when and you know we talked about Ruben's episode and mm-hmm. and we talked about gatekeeping and stuff. Right. You know, when you were coming up, did you? experience that like where you try to be Javi where you were Javi trying to learn yeah. barbering bar- yeah. or barbering yeah and like did it take you a few barbers to get through before one said all right man I got you yeah well yes yes and no um I think that there's one of the <laughs> one of the interesting <laughs> things about like when you're trying to learn anything is that you have to find the right person that's good at teaching in your way of learning that's that's a big takeaway yeah, that's because not key. everybody learns the same. Right. You know, I'm a left-handed barber, so it was difficult for me to find a lot of left-handed barbers here in Aurora. Yeah. And it just so happens the shop that I work at now with Lewis, Lewis oh, yeah, was Lewis the first is lefty. Is the yeah. first left-handed barber that I saw in Aurora. So I wanted to get under his wing and under his tutelage and to see the different angles because cutting lefty versus cutting righty is different. It is not a big difference, but it, it is a little different. Right. Even the lever, the way that you use the lever on the clipper is a little different yeah. because it's on your it's on your thumb your your thumb side for your uh, well, for your right for your le- for you as a lefty it's closer to your thumb the lever's closer right. to your thumb yeah but if you're right handed you got to reach across the right. clipper little stuff like that yeah you yeah. know that, that makes a big difference in, in the way a haircut turns out yeah um but yeah man when I when I think about some of the barbers that that were willing to help me. Um, some of them, I, w- I will say, I don't think it wasn't, I don't think it was that they didn't want to help me. I think that it could have been that they were just too busy. Right. You know, they just didn't have the time to sit there and show me step by step yeah. how to get the blend to look a certain way, how to get used to cutting different textures of hair, yeah. all that stuff. Right. Um, one of the most underrated skills that I learned was how to deal with people. Yeah. You yeah, know, that's big. That, that right there, um, I learned in hair school. You know, some of my teachers made it a point to say, hey, your customer service has to be on point. You can be one of the best barbers in the world. Right. You know, but if your customer service is horrible, right, people won't want to come to you. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, know? that's true. So, that's true. But, yeah, man. No, that's what's up, man. Yeah, because that's, that's the thing, I think, uh, for anybody out there listening, man. If you feel like, you know, somebody's not giving you the answers or whatever the case may be, you just got to keep searching for them. That's you it. Know, they, they're going to find you. That's it. You and there's, there's always, you know, going back to like our first initial episode, when the student is ready, the master appears. Right. You know, so there's somebody, there's somebody along the way that, that wants to share the information. Yeah. They're just looking for the right person to share the information with. Yeah. You know, you knock yeah. on enough doors, somebody will answer. Right. Now, did you feel that, do you re- could you remember a time where the, what, what maybe what you did with Javi or maybe what you did with somebody else, and mm-hmm. we, we just didn't talk about that story, mm-hmm. that you were like, like, oh, this was given back in return? Mm. Hmm. That's a good question. Um, Because, like, the why you're thinking about that, because, yeah. like, the, the, the way I see it is, like, that, you know, it's an investment to do, right. to do these things. Right. You know, you do it out of the kindness of your heart, but at the same time, it's almost like, you know, you do so many of these good things, you know, helping people, helping others, answering questions, teach, True. teaching people what, what you know, right? True. And then eventually God is going to give it back to you. Yeah. It's an unknown when. Yeah. But it does come back. True. That's true. You know, so like, you know, I, when I think about it, I'm just like, man, like there is times where, you know, like I've been, first, the for example, the, the first one that comes to mind, man, like when I started, you know, trying to like help others or just kind of be, you know, nice to people was mm-hmm. when, like, I was in Florida on vacation, mm-hmm. and we were just sitting at, like, a diner, and mm-hmm. this older couple, like, grandmas, and grandma and grandpa age, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? They just paid for our bill. Wow. Like. like for no reason. No. Just I did know, it. Yeah, just did it. Huh. And I was just like, dude, man, every time I would think about that, I was like, man. And the crazy part is I got a ticket right after that. Like, I got a ticket <laughs> in Florida. So... <laughs> You know, so so the cra- I'm just like you know, but then I look, you know, I think about it, okay, it's like they give you something good, yeah, and then they give you something bad to see like, yeah, are you gonna continue even though something bad just happened? Right. That's the way you know. That's the lesson now, I learned from it. Now, yeah, I, I think that that 
Yeah, because that's how it works. Yeah, that you know, is, it's, that it's is how it works. Something that great will happen, and then something bad will happen. Yeah, that is how it works. Yeah, just to see and test your faith. Right. You know, to I see, see if you're still with me. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and that, so that, as you as you get older in life, you know, to the, to the young people listening out there, and even the people that are our age or older. Yeah, that is what life's about. It is. It it's it's really it's a constant test of your faith. You know, yeah. are you truly committed to what you say you believe in? Yes. You know, yeah. and um, yeah, man, some days the days are harder than others. Correct. But in those moments, you have to stay diligent. You yeah. have to stay focused. Oh, yeah. Uh, and continue to help others when you can. Right. You know, um, I know that there's been times for myself and, you know, I'm not saying this to brag or boast or anything like that, but like. I, I'll go out of my way for people at the barbershop or for customers or for, for guys that come in that I know are struggling. Yeah. Not because I have to, right. but just because. I, I, use some, I use some of the, the people that I come across in my life as learning lessons. You know, there was yeah. a, a gentleman, I, I, I can't think of exactly who said it, but he said, when you see a man stumble, don't yeah. laugh, learn. Yes. You know, it could easily be you. Right. I've had customers, I've had friends that have lost their jobs. Yeah. You know, have lost their homes, have lost their cars, right. have lost family members. And, right. you know, you, you, you see them at their lowest points at times. And I always remind myself, man, that could be me. Yeah. You know, so let me not laugh at that person because, right. you know, they lost their job or something right. happened to them. No, 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 no. That could easily be you or me. Right. You know, right. And be thankful and appreciative that it's not you and help them when you can. Yeah, no, definitely, man. Definitely, man. And as we transition. Mm hmm. You know, there's a there's a saying that we came across. Mm -hmm. The pain of moving forward is less than the pain of looking backwards. Ooh. You know, so when we when you think on that, do you have like a story or a, an example of where you know you you were in this spot where you had to like just keep going? Yeah. If you look back, you know, it was like, like I think damn man, I might lose it. You know. I think I can speak for a lot of people when I say this, right. but relationships is the first thing I think of. Yeah. One of the first things I think of because um, especially being younger, you know, and in your 20s, late teens, you get into relationships and you think that, you know, these relationships are going to last forever. Yeah, you know, that's true. You invest a lot in them, you know, and then uh, there comes a point where, you know, the sunken cost fallacy kind of kicks in. Which where what that what I mean by that is that because you've invested so much time into this person or into this relationship, you feel like you should stay. Right. But God, the universe could actually be telling you, hey, this not in a bad way, not in a negative way. Right. Yeah. It's not it's not bad right. that, that people break up, but just that that person was just a stepping stone for you and you were yeah. just a stepping stone for them. Right. You're meant to grow. You're meant to become a better version of yourself, you know, and so should that person as well. And they, eventually you, you want to see both of those people get to a place, man, where they're happy, content in life and so on and so forth. But in the moment, yeah. man, it's painful. It's painful. Oh, man, it you, can't, you, can't, you can't think about a year, two years down right. the road because you're just thinking about the pain that you're in from that relationship. So, you, you know, you break up. And you're going through that funk, man, where everybody, all your friends can see it. <laughs> your family yeah, yeah. can see it, you know, yeah. and they're like, oh, man, he's, he's going through it right now. Yeah. But the pain of that is better than sometimes if you were to stay in that relationship and continue to be unhappy. And then later on down the road, you know, you, you waste another five, ten years of your life being unhappy. Right. You know, it's just not worth it. Yeah. You know, that, no, that yeah, three-month period, man, where you have to rebuild yourself from the ground up yeah. is better than regretting the next five to 10 years, right. you know, potentially regretting oh, the next yeah. five to 10 years. Yeah, no, I agree with that, man. Yeah, the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, the what ifs is what kills me the most. You know, mm. like, you know, if what if I was to go like this route? Right. You know, and then, you know, if I don't, you know, you look back and you're like, man, mm -hmm. Time time flew, like you said. Yeah. You know, it's like, what if I would have did this? What if mm -hmm. I would? So I think when you know when I hear that, I'm just like, man, yeah, those what ifs. If it, I think if it's a, you know, a, a thought in your mind to try something, mm -hmm. I think you got to try it. You have to, because you know you won't know, and the un and to go years without knowing, I, for me, it, it that will eat you up, dude. It eats me, bro. At this point in my life, it yeah. eats me. Like I have to 
I have to know the answer. Like, yep. is it, is it going to work or is it not going to work? Yep. And, um, yeah, that's, that, that's my thoughts on that, man. I think, uh, like, for example, this, this podcast, to give an example, mm-hmm. is uh, the pain of us going forward. There is mm-hmm. pain to it. Right. You know, because, you know, we have to put in the reps. We have to come here every week. Not that we have to, but we want to. Exactly. Because we want, we want, we want to build this thing, right? Exactly. But if one day, you know, we're like, man, we, hey, bro, like, it was a good run. Right. And then we go, man, and then I could, I already know. Yeah, I can yeah, see it in my mind. Yeah. I'm seeing, I'm sitting with you at the bar talking yeah. to you, and you'd be yeah. like, dude, 10 years from now, what if we would have just stuck said, with it? You know, and I, I can't, I can't, no, we I can't, can't live like no, that, bro. Like, can't. I just can't. I think I would be more upset sitting in that bar yeah, we would. than I would be happy. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I agree with that. Like, you know, may, maybe down the road there is an answer, and it, and it says, you know, hey, it was a good run. Right. But, but I think we, it would be better to let the course tell you that I rather agree. than you decide. I agree. You know, I so, agree. I agree. Um, but it t- it took time for us to to you know I think the previous life experiences that we had right. have helped us and prepared us for this particular situation, you know. And that, and it's you know we say it all the time. It's a marathon, not a sprint. But you have to be okay with having those off days or those off weeks yeah. through the process. You know, yep. we haven't been able to shoot every single week. Right. We we set a goal for this year. When right. we first started out, hey, we'd love to shoot 52 episodes straight. Right. Oh, episode every week. We're right. on episode 38. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, still mean, have, we still have a few weeks left. So we know for a fact we're at least going to get 40 episodes in our first year of yeah. having our podcast. Right. Is that, is that uh, uh, um, I mean, could we have shot two episodes a, a week? Yeah, we could have. Yeah. But to me, in my mind, the fact that we even have 40. Yeah. Is a huge accomplishment. Yeah, you know, and we like to celebrate the tiny wins here. Yeah, you got you, know? you got to you got to celebrate them, man. You definitely got to celebrate them. Yeah, so we're getting close to damn. Yeah, we are getting close, get close to forty. Yeah, I'm gonna we're gonna have to look back to our goals too because like, we are. You know, we it's are. okay to fall short of them. Because I be, I believe off the top of my head, man. I and, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut no, you hey, off, but ahead. I was thinking like I know we had sent we 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 one of the goals also was a thousand followers. A thousand subscribers. A thousand subscribers. I'm yeah. sorry, you know, and yeah. well, I think we're a tenth of the way there. Yeah, which we still is like progress. Nine hundred to go, but we got it. Which is progress, yeah. you know, and that's that's on one of the the social media sites. Right. But under the other social media sites, we've been able to build an organic following. Right. You know where we didn't. You know, some people will pay for the bots and the the right. AI, the fake, you know, followers, but right. we haven't done that. No, we haven't done none of that. You know? Nope. Yeah, one so, step at a time. Yeah, man. I then yeah. So I think uh, when when I think of that, you know, move, looking back, you know, I'd rather just keep going. I agree. You know, I'd rather suffer that little pain. I agree. Um, and then the other thing is, do things you know, and then do it better. Mm. You know, <laughs> so um, you know, a lot of people want to try, and you know, it, well. So before I sit, before I dive into it, mm-hmm. so we talk about trying new things, mm-hmm. right? You know, and it's okay to try things, but I think sometimes people dive too far into to things they don't know. Yeah, and then you know that's where they get caught up. Yeah, you know, whereas like if you just do the things you know how, you, you focus learn on how to, those. Yeah, focus on that. Good. Then you know you see a return. Yep, I agree. Because you know, one of the things I think about is you used to you well, you say it is that uh, you got to make sure you keep the faucet on. Right. You got to keep the main faucet on before you right. start turning on or trying to open up other ones. You know, right. uh, you know, we use that more metaphorically for right. money, but it's but it's true in other areas of your life too. Correct. You know, if you put too many things on your plate, it can become overwhelming. Right. Um. Even for us, even right, like with right. podcast, there's there's all this energy and all this positivity we have surrounding it that yeah. we want to branch out into other things. Yeah. But like Trinil told us, hey, focus on the main thing. Right. You guys are good at podcasting. You guys are right. good at having genuine conversations and being authentic. Right. Stick with that first. Yeah. The other stuff is going to come. Right. The merch. Yeah. The, the guests. All that stuff <laughs> is going to come. Yeah. But you got to focus on making sure that foundation right. is strong and solid. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that, so we're human. Yeah, we're human. See, like, and, and that's the great part. Like, we've been doing this and, you know, we don't have all the answers. And, and and then you know, go and find it from, you know, one of the guests who, who just be like, hey man, like mm-hmm. you guys are doing this right, just keep doing that. Yep. You know, yep. 
And, and you know, we want to give a shout out to him because he didn't have to share that tidbit of information no, with us, you know, but he he's conscious enough to see that, hey, we got a good thing going. Right. And naturally, you know, iron sharpens iron. Right. And it wasn't it wasn't like we got offended by it. No. You know, it was constructive criticism. Right. And that's a, a probably a piece of advice, man, we should give to our viewers and our listeners. Oh, Don't yeah. be afraid of constructive criticism. No. You know, if you have people that are successful that are around you, learn from them. Pick the yeah. brain here and there. Ask right. possibly what you could be doing better. Right. Or maybe if there, maybe, you know, just show them what you have on your plate. Yeah. You know, you don't have to tell them everything, but give, but give them a, a, yeah, give a good them, view yeah. of what you got going on. So that way they can kind of help you um, fine tune it a yeah, little bit. definitely, man. Yeah, because without constructive criticism, I mean, you can't get better. Right. If you think, if you think what your way is is the only way. Yeah, you're. I mean, you're in for a rude awakening. Yeah, because that you know that ain't the case. You need multiple eyes, you know, you do. seeing this man, and you do. And, you know, we get we got our pair of four, right? And, you know, and then we had to add another, you know, set, you know, yep. and then he was the one to be like, you know, make, make it make. You, he made it make sense, you know, yep. like all right, you're right. Yeah, that actually makes perfect sense. Yeah, you know, so yeah. And would you say along with that that. Uh, being able to uh, uh, listen to constructive criticism, you have to be willing to put your pride and your ego to the side. Yes. Too, right? Yeah. Because uh, naturally, man, you know, you 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 may feel like, hey, man, I thought I was here. Right. You know, I thought I thought I was way higher than w w what people are telling me I was at, or whatever the case is. But right. you know, sometimes you just have to be a little humble, you know, and take a step back and say. Put my pride and my ego to the side, man, and hear out what this person has to say. Yeah, it's for my it's for my better and betterment. Yeah, you know? definitely. And with that, we'll take a quick break. Cool. But yeah, man. So back from the break, uh -huh. and uh, you know, you were talking about putting your pride to the side, and you know, the embetterment of yourself. And I think you know that's very important for adults, and I think it it needs to be established at a very young age. I think I struggled a lot sometimes when I was younger. Mm -hmm. I really didn't get it until like you know or. A, a short understanding of it when I started to get to high school because mm -hmm. then I, you know, or uh, at the end of high school because mm -hmm. I started to figure out, like, man, about a year or two, I'm not going to be a kid no more. Right. So I need to, I need to figure out what I'm doing wrong. I need right. to listen to somebody. Right. You know, and I think um, us as adults, we have to either pour that into our kids or pour that into, uh, you know, the youth if you're a part of them. Right. You know, if you have some type of coaching or something going on. you got Right. You got to pour that into people because, uh, you know, it's a, it's definitely a skill you got to learn in order to get better. For sure. For sure. For sure. And we all have pride and ego. I mean, I don't care right. who, who you are. There's, yeah. Everybody has that ego. Right. You know, and uh, yeah, man, it's it can be your it can be your friend and it can be your enemy. Right. You yeah, know? definitely. And then and then so the harder you are on yourself, the easier life will be. You know, that's that's uh, another thing mm -hmm. that. Kind of add, kind of ties into constructive criticism. It does. You know what? What do you? Is there? Is there something where you were like, you know, throughout your life where you've been super hard at yourself, and then on both sides of it, both sides of the coin, where it paid off, and then maybe at sometimes where it was like, "Hey, man, you're doing too much. To uh, you're being too hard on yourself." Yeah, I, I think uh, yes to both. I mean, I I think that there's been times in my life where. I didn't give myself time to grow. I didn't give myself time to make the mistakes that I needed to make. I just thought that because I knew better that it was going to hap just happen, you know. And um, life is, uh, life humbles everybody, you know. I think in my younger 20s, man, I was so focused on money and so hungry to become a millionaire that I missed out on relationships, that I missed out on connecting with people, you know, and um, that's that's tough, you know, to look back and think about it, but yeah. I needed to go through that because right. I, I realized very quickly money isn't everything, no. you know. When you see your family members have health issues, you know, you realize very quickly money money is just a tool, you know, and so um, that that's something that comes to mind. Um, but then the other side too is that what, what was the second part to that question? I'm sorry. Uh, so so the harder you are on yourself, the easier life will be. So then, was there a part? There was a time where where you were so hard on yourself where it, it worked out for you, 
and then there's a th- there's another time where it didn't yes. where it was like somebody had to come to you and be like, hey man, yes, I need, you need you need to stop being so hard on yourself. Yes, the time where I was hard on myself and it paid off was with cutting hair, was with pursuing barbering because I used to do this was back man when before the age of social media man when I was doing house calls in basements bathrooms. Was that the ten dollar holler? Or yeah, was that man. The, it was yeah. yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it was. It was I just wanted to make just enough money to be able to pay my bills and build a clientele, you know. And at the time, man, I remember people would tell me, "Hey, come out to this party, man. Come over here. Come to come to this college campus." And I was like, "No, man, I can't. I'm working this weekend. Work. I got to go and do even if it was three house calls, you know, only to make forty, fifty bucks. But that's gas money." Yeah. Back in, you know, late 2000, yeah, that you was know, a, yeah, tw- yeah, 2009, 2010, 2011. Hey, that was gas money for me. Right. But it worked out. Um, what about yeah. yourself, man? What, what? Yeah, I think um, I think up until I was about 30, because mm-hmm. we always talk about it, like, and, it, and it's true. Like, it's, you know, we talk about 30. 30 has always been a common theme here on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, but before then, I was just, I was chasing, felt like I needed to get something done, like, mm. quick. You know, I needed to get to where I wanted to be quick, mm-hmm. and I was I was uh, you know, working a lot, um, trying to buy more investments, and uh, my mom was like the one, she was like, hey, like, she's like, you don't need to make it happen right now, mm-hmm. like you got time, mm-hmm. and I remember that conversation in the kitchen. I was like, I don't have time. That's right. what I told her. Right. Because I at that time I felt like I was behind. Yeah. You know, and then um, it took obviously took some growing pains, and then realizing you know you run your own race you know and and uh now what made you feel like you didn't have time i think it was uh looking up to like the like the idols in the investment world right you know looking up to them and um realizing that you know maybe like maybe I'm behind in their way you because they were at a certain age when they reached their success right you know not Cause it wasn't, it wasn't so much social media. Like it was, cause I really only, I really only pay attention to some of the bigger investors. And, you know, when I see how old they are, some of them, you know, some of them in their thirties, some of them maybe early forties. Right. You know, I felt like, like man, time's going to fly. I ain't, right. you know, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. Right. And, um, so yeah, that was like when I was being, you know, super hard on myself. And then when I started to realize like, look, man, all I can do is what I can do. And control what I could control, and yep. if the investments come, they come, because otherwise I'm end up forcing something, and then it's it's going to turn out terrible. Yep. You know, and then I need then I had to sit down and I had to be like, all right, man, what what is it that I want to do with my life? Like, you know, I, I have my career, that's great, mm-hmm. but like obviously in, in my mind I feel like there's so much more left. Yeah, for you sure. You know, that's only a portion. You know, like barbering for, sure. for you, like, or or somebody who's an accountant, like you know, I hear. You know, you get to a point in your in your life where you're just like, you know, time is time has came, and now yep. you're like, man, what if what if I try something else? Yeah, you know, like even my mom, my mom's like, you know, she's super successful, right? But I know there's times she thinks like, man, what if I could like work from home or yeah, you know, whatever, you know, like yeah, you know, which she does work from home, but what if she could do, you know, be in Florida right now, you yeah. know, like, yeah. you know, I think about that stuff, and so then I, you know, it's like all I can do is control these things. I decided what I wanted to do was I'm gonna de- dedicate my time to only this, and and the well these things right, and mm-hmm. then I'm just gonna invest in those, and then mm-hmm. whatever happens, I'll live with the results. Right, kind of like basketball. Right, yeah. I'm just gonna put in the work, man. Right. That's all. All I can do is show up and That's put it. in the work, and then if, but if at the end of the game, man, if it if it if it Whatever the results are, those are the results. Yeah, but you yeah. knew you gave it your all. But I knew at least I tried it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then that's when, you know, like we talked about bouncing around. You know, I think that was a good period that we both had in the 20s, you know, just trying sure. stuff. and For sure, for sure. And then, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's kind of, uh, so like that's me being hard on myself and then, um, and where it was like kind of not paying off. And then the other, but the other flip side where I was hard on myself was when I was in school mm-hmm. and co- well, in college. Mm-hmm. And then when I graduated, yeah, you know, I was like on the grind. Like I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to grind. I'm going to work. I'm going to go away. Like I ain't going to talk to nobody. Mm-hmm. Come back. You know, I'm going I'm to, and then I try to get as many houses. And then that's what it was. Like I got to where I got to and yeah. then I hit a wall. 
Yeah. Like now I had to figure out how to get out of the ceiling. ceiling. Yeah. So then that's why I started being too hard on myself. Yep. You know, and it was like, hey man, just relax. You you were you were on you were on like a look at how far you've come. Right. You know? Yeah. Like what you've been able to accomplish. And I think maybe maybe that's the interesting thing about life is maybe that's why we plateau. Yeah. Maybe plateauing is is to remind us to reflect about how far we've come. Yeah. Before we take that next step into that next space. Correct. Because if you don't well, it, the days just, they blend together. Yeah. You know, and if you never stop and slow down to smell the roses, man, and look right. at how far you've come, you're doing yourself a disservice. Yeah. You really are, you know, because it's not about, you know, like we said a second ago, it's not about the money and the success. Yes, those things, yeah, it's, it's great yeah. to be able to, you know, uh, go here, drive this car, do that. Right. But like the, the, the peace of mind that you get when you go home at night and you lay right. your head on that pillow of saying, man, I know I gave it everything I had today. Yeah. You know, that's a good feeling. Yeah. That's a very good feeling. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's where everybody has to get to, man. And and I think, you know, if people, because I, I think if people are struggling, because, you know, like I was struggling, um, you know, we our, our DMs are always open. Right. Yeah. You know, we don't got all the answers. No, we don't. But, but you know, we do have you know, some of the experiences that we all go through. Right. Like, that's the crazy part. I was thinking about it the other day. We all go through the same things. In different ways. In different ways. <laughs> so, like, even though you're going through something, like, somebody else has the answer. Yeah. You just got, you know, you just got to ask the question. Yeah. And lately, man, I've gotten, I've gotten a lot better at, uh, when I'm at the shop, man, at giving advice to the young, the young guys that come in. Um, and they tell me about their problems and the different experiences and the trials and tribulations they're going through in their twenties. And I always remind them to, you know, like what we're, what we're talking about, Hey man, be hard on yourself, but also learn how not, how to give yourself grace every now and then, you know? Yeah, man, finish school, finish school, whatever you do, make sure you finish school, you know, but don't, don't, you know, think that just what, right when you get out, you're going to be making six figures. You're just right. setting yourself up. Right. To you're setting yourself up to be disappointed yeah. and, and then you're going to be in a slump. You know, yep. you might even go through a depression. But yeah. if you go through a depression, that's okay too. Right. At some point in your life, you're probably going to go through a depression. Absolutely. It's better to go through it when you're younger than when you're older. Right. Right. And learn how to deal with it. Yeah. You know, and it's okay. It's it's okay to not be okay all the time. Right. You yeah. Know? Yeah, man. It's like I tell uh, some of the other people or some of the other people that ask me, things it's like you're you're at the bottom of the next of the next chapter or the yep. next or the next climb yep you're at the bottom now you're at the top now you're at the bottom of the next stage yeah and and then until you realize that you're you're not gonna you're gonna be frustrated yep but if you just learn to like understand that part yeah not be frustrated about it. now i just gotta climb another ladder you know i think of uh i think of and i, I think this is a great way to sum up this episode yeah is there's that scene from rocky where he's talking to his son outside of like a diner and his son is telling him like, Hey dad, I don't want you to take this fight. You know, aren't you, don't you care about what people think about you? Don't you care about, you know, uh, how people are going to make fun of me and et cetera, et cetera. And Rocky's response to him was, and, I, and I'm not, I'm probably not going to get it right. right I'm going right. to butcher it a little bit, but he says something like, I'm going to tell you something you already know. Life ain't a bunch of sunshine and roses, you know, and nobody's going to hit as hard as life. It's not about how hard you can hit, but it's about how many times you can get hit and keep getting up and keep getting up and pushing forward. And that, I mean, ever since I heard that, that's always stuck with me, you know, because that really is the epitome of what life is for any and everybody. Because to your point, right. we're all going to go through things. Right. You know, none of us are going to get out of this, you know, scot scotch free. No, no, nobody <laughs> you know? is. Nobody is. So it's just... uh Man, learning to embrace it, you know, learning to enjoy the journey, yeah. you know, taking your lumps and, and being okay with it. Yeah, you know? definitely, man. Definitely. That. And with that, man, I mean, that that is a great way to sum it up, man. So with that, hit them with that outro. As you guys know, man, we wa we appreciate you guys for watching and for listening, and we'll catch you guys on episode 40, all right? And I just want to let you guys know, man, we do have another guest coming. This will be our final guest of the year. Yo. Um, you know, as long as everything goes well, God willing, man, we will see you guys on episode 40. As always, take care. Peace. Peace.